In this video, I'm going to show you can issue refunds with Stripe Connect. You'll see here I'm logged in as a seller and I have a list of all the sales that I've made. You can see the most recent one went through today, February 8th for $40. And if I look at my Stripe dashboard, you'll see that that is that particular sale there. But let's say we weren't able to process this order and we want to refund it. What I can do in my app is I click on the refund. You'll see I'm running a workflow action. You'll see the refund status has just changed from NA to succeeded. And if I go back to my Stripe dashboard and refresh my payments section, you'll see that that $40 has now been refunded to the customer. I'm going to start off in my database because you'll see here under users, I have two different users. One is a customer and one is a seller. We're talking about Stripe Connect, which means we're dealing with a marketplace platform where sellers sell good on the marketplace, customers buy them, and then the marketplace itself takes a cut of each transaction. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm just going to run as a customer. And I'm going to be brought to this super simple page that I built into my bubble app. It just gives some details on the user, and their email address and their role, and then a product. And what's going to happen when I click on this purchase product button is I'm going to be brought to another page inside this bubble app where I can enter my payment details and make a $40 purchase for a Christmas jumper. So let's click that now. And you can see we're brought to this checkout page and I'm going to quickly put in my details. Now that I have these details in, I can click on the pay button and I'm going to be redirected back to the original page that we were on. And if we now go to our Stripe dashboard, we should see that there was another payment that just went through for $40. And if we click on collected fees, what we should see is 20% of that went to our marketplace. So again, we're dealing with a marketplace where the payments are split between the platform and also the seller. So $8 in this example went to the platform. There's a lot of work involved in setting up the workflows to process marketplace payments. I'm not going to go through that in this video. I will link to a video below where I go through how to set up Stripe Connect in your bubble app to process marketplace payments. We're really going to be focused on the refund aspect of that in this video. So we've now purchased the good, but I'm going to go back to my database and run as the seller who actually sold that good. So you can see here we have a new line item in our sales history is for a Christmas jumper for $40 and the refund status is NA. I've used some conditionals just to hide the group where we do product details and show the sales history based on the role of this user. Let's take another quick look at our database just so you can understand what information is feeding through here. I have a custom data type called transaction and every time someone purchases a good on my marketplace I'm creating a new transaction and saving down some of the details associated with that transaction. There are a number of different custom fields here, but the two we're going to focus on are payment intent ID and refund status, because they're two of the key ones for actually processing refunds. But just so you're aware, all the data in this table here, it's coming from that transaction data type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my table in my design tab, and I'm going to add in another row. So we'll click here, we'll click the plus, and we're just going to set the min width to be 120 pixels. We will give it a small bit of padding. Copy that text. And we'll just call this refund. And we'll drop a button into this cell here. So we'll refund. Get rid of all that padding. Attach the style. And give it a min height of 45. Okay, and when we click on refund, we're going to add a workflow. And I've installed the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin. This is a plugin developed by Cran Protect that makes it really easy to integrate Stripe Connect into your bubble app. And because I've installed this plugin, what I can do is when button refund is clicked, 
I can go down to plugins and you'll see here I have a bunch of actions that I now have access to. And the one I'm interested in is Stripe Connect Create a Refund. There's four fields here that I need to fill out. The first one is the payment intent ID. And if we go back to our database, I've saved that down. You can see here under the most recent transaction, there is a payment intent ID saved down. Again, I'm not going to go into the mechanics of how to do it in this tutorial, but if you look at the one I've linked below, that will show you exactly what you need to do to save that down. But now that we have saved the payment intent ID down, what we can do is in our workflow, we can simply reference here, current rows transactions, payment intent ID. The amount sense field is going to is going to represent how much we're actually going to refund. You may not wish to refund the entire transaction. I actually am going to do that, but you could put in a different amount if you wanted to. But I'm going to keep things simple. I'm going to say current rows transactions amount because then because again that's a value that I've already saved down in my database. You may or may not wish to refund the platform fee. So you may remember in our Stripe dashboard we collected eight dollars as a platform in that transaction. So you may wish to refund that or you may wish to leave that where it is and not give that back to the customer. I'm going to refund in this example, so I'm going to leave that as yes. And then finally, charge type. We're going to use destination or separate charge and transfer. This relates to how the charge was originally created. Again, I won't go down to this video, but we're going to stick with destination. So once we've created a refund, we actually want to check if this has gone true or not, because if we just click refund and this action is run, it may work, but there's always a risk that something goes wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to make changes to a thing. The thing we're going to change is the current rows transaction. We're going to change the refund status, and it's simply going to equal the result of step one, its status. So let's try that out. We refresh our application. Again, we're the seller. We've made this sale. $40 that's been paid, but we now want to refund it. What we can do is click on this refund button. You would have seen the refund status change to succeeded. And if I go back to my Stripe dashboard and refresh, we'll see that under application fees, the $8 that the marketplace had collected has been refunded. And that's because the entire payment has been refunded as you can see here. So that's how you process refunds in Stripe Connect.